and welcome to the NDP's Night Talk. This is the first episode in a series where we will be meeting with you every two weeks to discuss a number of issues that is affecting the Vincentian public. And the NDP, they will be discussing their vision of a way forward with us. So every two weeks, you can look forward to a number of different topics that we're going to discuss. We're going to be talking about the economy, um, we may talk about the tourism industry, increasing um, jobs. We talk about so many different things. And tonight's topic, we will be looking at developing the private sector and building an export-driven economy. So you can look forward to that for our talk tonight. And joining me, I have three very special guests. First, I would like to introduce you to the MD for Central Kingston. He's also the spokesperson for the NDP on national security. We have Major Leacock joining us tonight. We also have Laverne King. She's the PRO of the NDP, and she's also And last but definitely not least, <laughs> we have Senator Bruce, Israel Bruce. He is the candidate for South Central Windward, and he's the spokesperson for agriculture for the NDP. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. You're welcome. Is everybody good? Yeah, yes, good. I'm good. I am good from walking up the right. steps. I had uh, fun, but I'm happy that you guys are good. good. Um, before we get into this, Major, I have not seen you walking around much in the constituents we're going on with these little exercise on mornings what happened so, just a little change of room you take up oh so it's a different room okay. <laughs> it's a me problem uh, it's a me problem it's a me problem okay but i will get uh, right my your, your card i just um but no 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 so we'll be discussing developing the private sector and building an export-driven economy. So what I would like for us to do before we you know, get into the integrity is for each person to just give us a short outline of what they think can be done to boost exports. So can we observe the rule of ladies first? Lava, no, look at <laughs> Oh, you first. Ladies first. Ladies first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies first. Yeah, yeah. Actually, hoping to let seniority go. And, uh, ladies, ladies first. They're gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think that's when I hear the um, the term of us uh, getting an export led economy. So, in Vincent and the Grenadines, we're a small nation. We don't have like uh, oil and these other things that a lot of these other bigger countries have. In fact, we always know that our greatest resource is our people and we need to get our people more. Um, we need to make the best of, we need to make the best of them in terms of enabling them so that we, they could get the most uh, finances back. I think, for example, as St. Vincent and the Grenadines has more seascape than we do landscape. Okay. And I know that Bruce being agriculture spokesperson, <laughs> but I think, for example, that Grenada is doing more than we are doing on the export market when it comes on to the blue economy. And you can see that they're getting the, the, the they're reaping the, the benefits of that because certainly their economy is doing better than us. We're performing the worst in the OECS. We need to think about how can we get more money coming back into St. Vincent and the Grenadines by utilizing our natural resources that we have available to us. How do we do that? We look at things like, can we invest more in trawlers? Can we invest more in CMOS? Can we do uh, workshops and so forth that helps people to understand uh, how to be export ready? Because a lot of people have a lot of ideas, but they don't exactly know how to get the product ready for an international market. And a lot of time, too, people think that you need to have this grand thing, but we need to also think about what niche product can we provide here that can actually make us viable. And so I think about how we can fetch a higher um, income from what we do have so that we can get more revenue coming back into St. Vincent and Grenadines. Uh, Major? Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Um, in support of my, my, my sister here, 
the first thing that we really need to do as far as I'm concerned is to get away from the general keys and be more specific and targeted about what we want to do in the development of our citizens. You know, it's fairly easy, and we all do it, both sides are doing it. Jobs, 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 jobs. And so what's it? From where and how? Where they? How we do we do it? You know, we really need to be pretty clear eyed at this time as to what we do, how we do those things that we are promising. And I come from the point of view that there, there's an imperative that we must address. And that imperative is that we are just 150 square miles. We are about 100,000 people. And by any math, 150 square miles cannot generate enough of an economic marketplace to feed 100,000 people. And that's why, in a sense, I'm remitted to this goal so large. Stop the barrels and we're there. We start. Or we'll be the bad way. So if we come from that realization that our marketplace is just simply too small to generate the kind of economic activity that is required to take care of our people, then we can comfortably accept that we have to be outward looking, which we have always been as a nation. We have always been outward looking. And in that regard, it becomes a part of the national psyche, a part of the, 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 the political drive that we must be, and my you say driven, but I I'll stay with a short as well as the word left. We must become an export-led economy. And to give a sharp distinction, you ask my, my, my colleague, how, how do we do that? Well, building a port, grand as it is, and important as this, if you don't have the philosophy, then it will be more of the same. We continue to import, 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 and widen our trade balances. Something must drive and trigger our strategy to speak to that question. How do we feed 100,000 people? On 150 square miles, we have to be export led in our thinking and our policies. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> sorry. I think I think Lavon sort of set a particular framework for the conversation and, and made it sort of um, took it um, off to a particular angle. I, I'd say this though that if we are to be serious about having a conversation about an export-led economy as, as a phraseology that would have some sort of application to our own existence and well-being. Now, we need to look within the subsectors of economic development and ask ourselves, um, which of these sectors are going to allow us to develop that type of economy? And maybe um, begrudgingly, I'd say the agri agricultural sector allows itself to provide such an impetus, yes? Now, when you look at the mission as advocated by the current administration in terms of the agricultural ministry, what are the strategic priorities? You would see as a recurring decimal year after year that they objectively say that they seek to reduce our importation and increase the exportation. That's, that's a beautiful idea, but there has to be the creation of a synergy between the third, between the, the thoughts and the practical. You have to make what you think come to a reality. What is it we're doing? Once we say so, we do the very opposite. Case in point, if you were to look at the statistics and see the quantity of poultry products that we bring into this country, meat products that we import, white potatoes, we import carrots, we import onions, we import garlic, we import, and the list goes on and on and on. But how could we, as a St. Vincent and the Grenadines, with, with rich, fertile soil, cannot bring ourselves to the place where we say that we can produce sufficient carrots, onions, string beans, um, garlic, white potatoes of the, of, of the kind and quantity? that first of all deals with local consumption and then look to the possibility or probability of exportation. I say we can. 
But we have been practically lazy in terms of leadership, in terms of what we do in this country. I'll give you a case in point. The Canadian government has funded a program within the region that supported agricultural ministries across the region to look into the, the testing of, of white potatoes. 2024, St. Vincent talking about running a phase of a program to see the viability of it. Dominica is like 20 years ahead of us with the experimentation of white potatoes to deal with food security in Dominica and look at the possibility of exporting white potato. We are 20 odd years behind. So we say, but we're not serious. So the agricultural sector is one in which we can. So the peppers and the and the the acive and the, and the, 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 the thyme and so forth, all of that, blending themselves like the pepper by itself, um, pepper sauce for export, um, seasoning for export. Those are possibilities within the Ministry of Agriculture, within the agricultural subsector, where farmers can make a significant contribution towards the economic development of certain communities and advance their own economic position and not having this lazy reliance on government. I say lazy reliance because the current crop of politician in, politicians in government want to enable this environment where they imbue a, a degree of laziness on our people to rely on them so that they could always control them. We need to move out of that trend. Now, I just want to follow up on, on something that you were saying. You brought up farmers. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of support do you think is needed for farmers in order to make something that, like what you're proposing possible? Thank you so, so very much. Um, I just came from the lovely community of Chapman's, just moments ago. Okay. And I will tell you what, the farmers, in Chapman's are clear, crystal clear, that there are a number of things that are not in place that hampers agricultural development in that part of the agricultural belt. So, one, we have poor access roads to the farms. Farmers are deciding by droves to give up farming because one, they can't get to the farm, and in, in order for them to do so, the, the, the task becomes herculean, the cost becomes exorbitant, and therefore cost of production does not make sense to the farmers. So the need for proper access road to our farmers. They've been screaming out about finding proper and appropriate markets for their produce. Trinidad may be the best example where traffickers are assisting farmers to get their produce out of St. Vincent. But there's a fundamental problem. And maybe sometime later on, a major might chime in on it. But there is a, a transactional issue between the, the National Bank of, of Trinidad and Tobago, the East Caribbean Central Bank, and Bank of St. Vincent Grandies. So when it comes to the foreign, foreign currency exchange, there's a difficulty with, with traffickers being able to go there, sell their produce, get their money, come back, pay the farmers. So the issue of marketing of agricultural produce is a significant problem. I was talking to a, a, a group of youngsters and Chapman's yesterday, and I was showing them where about two, three years ago, a young man from Hadley's village in, in the constituency of South Central Willowood would purchase four or five bags of breadfruit, roast them by midday Friday, take them to the airport. By the time they landed East End to Otola, each of those roasted breadfruit would be roughly about 10 US dollars each. So four bags of breadfruit, 20 breadfruit per bag, you see what he's making. So it's not that the market is not there. You go to every supermarket, the, the turmeric, the ginger, the dashin, the, the bananas, everything, the market rate out there. I am saying that there's a preponderance of laziness on the part of the current of politicians in government, and especially in the Ministry of Agriculture, for not going out there and mark, looking for market for the agricultural produce for farmers. Then, our farmers, are ambitious. They're working hard across this country. And I am very proud of the hard working farmers and fisher folks. But it is a crying shame for a farmer to get, get up early in the morning and to come back late in the evening to provide for his crop and for his animals through the very early stages. And when it gets to the point where it's supposed to reap the benefit, here comes the guys who want them more than them. So the, 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 the Peridial lastness moves in, 
you you don't have your crops to harvest you don't have your animals to to, to benefit from and they disappear and there's no support structure to help the farmers who are at the mercy of the the thieves that we call perennial losses and we have to find a way to hold that problem by the, the by the neck and not scuff it off and if I could jump sure. in there a little bit, I think one of the ways in which we, we tie that in is a, is the fact that Senator Bruce just indicated that farmers are, people are um, moving away from the lands in droves. And it ties into the whole theme of uh, export-led economy, because if people are not producing, then what are they going to ship out? Right. With? Right. You know, So if more and more people are turning away from the land, then obviously, that is the exact point that is being yeah, developed that you know you don't have sufficient to service us here much less to export because at what point would i want to continue farming when i know that half of my crop is going to be stolen anyway right. before it even gets to the point of the opportunity for export well, well, so i'll uh, uh, tell you why another major is going to chime in very soon i'll tell yeah, you what I, I I I mean, let, me, well, let me say this you know there's not, there, there's seemingly not a difficulty with the current set of political administrators, you know. Let's use the issue of live animals being shipped to Grenada. Now, I don't have a problem with regional cooperation and integration and food security, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when we are shipping live animals to Grenada, maybe butchers can't satisfy their market requirements in Musky because they cannot provide the necessary cuts to international standards from live animals to send out to Musky. So we have Vincentians whose business cannot thrive because we're not producing enough, but we're still exporting. A paradox indeed. I, I think as well, another important point to be made there is the absence of a marketing board. I think that one of the major problems that continues to plague our, our, our farmers is the fact that a lot of time you have all of this time you spend almost 20 most of your working hours in the farm where do you then find the energy the resources to then now and come back and mm -hmm. market again mm -hmm. I, I tell you this and i know it from experience because as a business owner myself having to as a small business <laughs> <laughs> who oftentimes sometimes i post that you know i'm diving and so forth and people think oh you're just posing but the truth is i often find it difficult to have to be part of the hands-on process right then I still have, I have to ensure that the productivity is up, which is the same for the farm on land. I have to ensure that the employees are kept fed, sometimes lucky they're more than me. <laughs> you know? And then I still have to come back and by myself, find a market for it. And you only have also many hours in a given day. And so the problem I would imagine similarly for agricultural farmers, as it is for those of us who are in the blue economy, myself as a CMOS farmer, that you spend all of this time toiling in the sun and then you still have to turn around. And indeed, too, not, not everybody has the same skill set. That's it. That's it. So whereas fortunately for my team at Grenadine's Goal, I have the skill set to design a flyer to design a package that makes it look appealing for a demographic outside of St. Vincent and Grenadines. A marketing board in place for our farmers could help them with those sort of things. And if we go into making St. Vincent and Grenadines more of a niche, um, a niche, a niche country where we provide organic, um, organic produce, we now can push brand St. Vincent as a country that produces organic. Um, white potatoes and so forth and so we come under this well, one umbrella mean? we fetch a higher dollar for produce right. under that and then you take it to the marketing board having established a certain standard and then we know that we're at a place that is ready for export and when you when you fetch the higher dollar it comes back your cost of living 
you you can now do more things with the money that you make so you can now government correct government government revenue government increases services correct people. you have less people on so social that's programs true. therefore less persons needing welfare assistance more money could now go back into healthcare services so you see heading into the direction of being more export led and driven gets more resources finances coming back into better the country revenues. better livelihoods Sorry, Major, I think no, I no, that's 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 And I know that I'm going sorry. to leave you to go into the other processing. Well, uh, uh, well I uh, get there eventually, <laughs> but I, I'm happy with the exchange that we have. And maybe let us talk about what we are not doing in Sydney. We are talking enough and speaking of enough about what it's going I mean, here we are three of us. Right. And look at what is happening and the ideas are beginning to flow. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to, to um, my. Bruce's um, right. commentary on, on the Dominic experience. Interestingly enough, Dominic is a small island state like ours, yes, but much bigger than Sydney by that space, but equally much smaller in, in population size. But that's not the, what I want to extract from his reference. What I want to extract from his reference is that Dominic is a good case in point. Dominic, at one time for many years, produced soap. So it comes from the, the, the copper, oh, from the coconut, coconut yeah. from the large coconut. And under the, 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 the rubric of DCP, Dominica Coconut Products, they did a fairly good and thriving business. Um, taking care of the Dominica market. But the distinction between that and when a, con a company and a country now takes an export led position is what did they do? And what they did is to recognize that, look, we are playing around with a potential game changer. And so in Dominica, DCP as a coconut, as a sole producer, was a big business in Dominica. But they needed to become, and I like to put it in a different way, they were a big fish in a small pond. What they needed to do, and eventually did, was to say, you know what happened? We don't have the resources to go international. Why don't we do what we do now with someone who could take us internationally on the eastern seaboard of North America, in, into Europe, and into the, um, the cruise ship? And they then linked themselves with Lever Brothers International, which was an, and you heard the word mentioned all the internet, an international brand. And once they did that, the amount of bar soaps they began now to sell for the cruise industry, which is enough of a market by itself, all the five star hotels and so many other places in the world, it is something that DCP never could have gone themselves. Now, that same kind of experience is found in other places in the Caribbean. Alinata Rump in, in Barbados is good to do business in Baxter's Road. But when they move from a Baxter's Road mindset and then sell their rum to Malibu, which is an international brand, they can't produce enough from for the international market. Red Stripe had the same experience like of, 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 how, yeah, of how they can go abroad. So the point I'm saying, the export-led concept is one in which I'm suggesting government has to consciously commit resources to change the current orientation. Yes, farmers produce on the basis of guaranteed markets, but we are going beyond that. And beyond that is, is beginning to address the question, yes, this has a production problem, that is, we must produce more so that we can sell more, but we must also have a productivity mindset, produce more with less, smarter, sharper, and better. So we have to do both at the same time. So, where where the slight differentiation with my colleague thus far, although I know that that the, the citizenship is having an effect, is where we begin to understand and appreciate to sell anything at all, anything at all that you want to sell. First, you have to understand that we are functioning in a global village. You have to have a global, group. and if you want to take part in a global village, then you have to develop brand. Brand equity, and you heard my colleague mention that before. So that 
she mentioned this in Vincent Brown with respect to the uh, the, the her, 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 her part of life. Uh, I have floated the idea of developing the Simmons and the Grenadines. A Chateau Abraham. So it's neither here nor there. Because Sir Vincent had that international image before when we spoke about Sea Island Cotton. When we, we were one of the world's largest or uh, most effective uh, producers of cotton under the Sea Island brand, so we did have a name at one, but we have lost that. The fact is, therefore, you have to know how to go abroad. What is the template? What are the tiny steps? What are the order those steps? And how do you do that? So, in the same way, this is where the tie down history rule. That you will take $90 million from the NIS to give it to a hotel plant. Or you will take a loan from the Taiwanese for $135 million to put up a hotel plant on the Leeward Coast. In, after which you then do what? You give out management contracts to people to manage and run the hotel business. When do we get to that stage? that we say that all farmers need the same hands-up approach of large capital and transformational investment of not just guaranteed markets, but take them to a place where they're not now a five case per week or per month provider, but they become small fish in a big pond. Not big fish in a small pond, small fish in a big pond, because we are now in, in Brooklyn, the largest concentration of incense in the world. We're in High Wycombe. We are where in Toronto, you, you, you name your location. And we're about in these marketplaces. And that's when it begins to make sense. So that's what we have to have at the back of our mind. We are changing. Now that is structural in thinking because our economy still continue on the old plantation mode, where we just do a monocrop and we sell as much as ever as we can. So let me pause here with this statement, which goes back to the shadow ministry of my, of my friend, Israel. One of the most fundamental statements that was made in the last parliament came from the Minister of Agriculture. And he said this, St. Vincent as a stands no cannot ship on a weekly basis any product, any commodity, any item on a sustained basis that can fill a ship and justify a ship coming to Sydney and Grenadines. And you went further correctly to say the last time we could have done something like that was when we walked alongside with our other winner islands colleagues and functioned through the geese lines to ship bananas aboard. So weekly Grenadines and Vincent and Lucia Dominic could fill a boat with bananas, and then the other relation, the related products, coconut, yam, dashi, tana, we start eating, and went into Europe. Now, if that is correct, if that is correct, and he is correct, it also means that if we are going to become an export-led economy, over and beyond the domestic preparation of budgets, since it's by itself, since it's by itself, and others, we have to go back to think about the collecting. What are we at the Windward Islands grouping doing to make sure that um, between us there's enough salsa, there's enough mangoes, there's enough papa, there's enough passion fruit, there's enough breadfruit, there's enough whatever commodity we're talking about. And how do we agree among ourselves how we go collectively abroad? Because some of that is going to be necessary because we're getting into the big league which involves serious marketing, serious distribution, value chain issues, and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm saying. It's, just, it's not a small market. And it's, it's an area that has to separate us, the New Democratic Party, from the other guys. Because the writer to that, the writer to that, is that once we begin to speak and talk agriculture, once we begin to speak about the sea, once we begin to speak of farmers and fishers, we are speaking about the small man by and large. And that in and of itself, not just people-centered, but it represents a bottom-up approach to economic development. The money is the people who need it most, e immediately, rather than waiting on those who collected at the top, let's say to a tourism plan, 
and hoping that it filter down to the bottom. Because after the manager got his portion, the chef got his portion, the investor got their portion, the supervisor of X, Y, and Z, then we begin to take care of the gardeners and who make up the bed and the bartenders and we live happily ever after. Yeah. Equally important, but one is like an immediate injection into the blood of the post. If, if, if I may just chip in um, here, Danny, because a lot of what, what, what um, my, my good friend Lee just said is there is a bottom line question that underlines all of what he has presented. And I don't know what the bottom line question is as far as I'm concerned respectfully. There has to be a difference in philosophy and understanding. One has to say, look, if we are going to create the type of impact that we want to create, speaking to the, the Leacox philosophy of, of advancement, if I may call it that, for, for uh, historical, purposes, okay. historical purposes, there must be, at the center of all of this, a discipline to sit down and plan and plan into the future. We have not seen that. But usually the problem is you can't plan what they don't know. Well, but you say no. that they don't know. No, I'm putting it to you. And we must take advantage of that which we have. In, in our team, we have a more diverse skill set. Accept it. That facilitates that thinking because I can just sit here at the round table and discuss tonight. If I didn't have years and years of preparation to speak in the way that I'm speaking on the subject matter, and I don't see anyone over that side even begin. Gomery, who is an agriculturist, you know what he said? The 50 million dollars I didn't buy, you know. But I remember when we tried 60 million dollars, it didn't work. So then, suppose the 75 million that we need, at least he didn't inject it. But he questioned whether 50 million dollar investment was enough. But we have to begin to think of investing in a bottom up approach with the people who need it most. Here and now, because I'm closing this in because I'm listening a lot of the excitement of sandals being here. 500 drops, and then we have a thousand next year. But Barbados, Barbados, not any given time, has more visitors in Barbados than they have majors. And Barbados' population is about 250,000. So that any given time, you have about 250,000 in Barbados, and it went belly up. The Bahamas, which also is part of the other country with very significant tourism plan, also belly up a few years ago because of the fitness and the vulnerability of tourism to. But, but I, I, hear, I hear your point, Major, but I, I remain very focused because there's an audience out there. And I want for the audience who. who I paid attention to what we discussed here tonight to understand the point of what separates us. The conversation that we are having is symptomatic of the fact that we recognize, firstly, that there is a vision that we have as to how we can take St. Vincent and the Grenades forward, understanding and appreciating how, how you build, develop, and advance an export led economy. You have to put in place plans to do that. The most classic embarrassment is the Agan International Airport. Multi-million dollar project. 2017, you had the opening of that airport. But look at the preparation to take advantage of the airport prior to its opening. And that tells you what separates the New Democratic Party from the others. Now, I, I, I hear all of the the ideas and, and the plans and the intention, which is great. But let's, for instance, look at what happened with the banana industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do we ensure that something like that does not happen again? We're just reliant on a specific sector. Um, in no way are we suggesting because if, if okay. you listen to the top leadership of the Indian Democratic Party, there is the advancement that there must be. We would advance an economy that is standing on four separate pillars. And agriculture 
happens to be one of those pillars on which the at least civilians and the economy will be driven. So we recognize, and history has taught us important lessons, that if we cast all our eggs in a single basket, we are going to be making a mistake that we've made in the past. Mm -hmm. and, and even within the sector of agriculture as a pillar to drive the economy, we also have to be cognizant of the fact that whereas it was just bananas, now we're saying, look, it must be. Um, it can't be a monocrop system. It, it must not be. It, it, it has to be the opposite. So we, we, we're not going to say, well, it's going to be sour sap and sour sap it's going to be. Oh, it's going to be our root and our root is going to be. We have to look at diverse ways in which we say, look, we're going to drive agriculture from a diverse vantage point and, and give us ourselves an opportunity. And, and I say this in, in, in before, I, I know my friend um, Laval is itching to, 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 to get further in the conversation. But the point that, that um, the Sinclair was making about us making sure that we don't make the mistakes of the past, it is important that we, as we push forward with, with our plan to advance and build something very deep, that we understand that the ordinary farmers across St. Vincent and the Grenadine, farmers and fisher folks, that they have, and they are ready to play their role to help in the drive this export-led economy. But government must do a few things. First of all, they must create it, they must create the enabling environment within which this must take place. And in so doing, give the resources that the farmers and fisher folks need. And in so doing, that one of four pillars to carry the intention economy will be steady as steady can. You know, I, I heard Bruce commenting on the fact that we have different pillars of the economy. And the truth is that agriculture is not the only thing that one can focus on when it comes on to an export-driven economy. We have talent. And so a lot of time, one of the other pillars of the uh, of, of economic growth that Dr. Fred always speaks about is orange. the economy, which in essence is the orange, orange. economy. Yes. Love yourself, Daniel, who is a very talented right. singer. Thank you. <laughs> that is, you know, <laughs> Who is to say that you cannot be providing uh, uh, exactly back in a vocals, uh, commercial ads, and so forth for people abroad? And part and of doing stay, that, stay there. the stage where then we get it for, for, for perfumes, yeah, and uh, and her clothing, you, you get the behind there, and, <laughs> and, and her bags, but it's a part and other things that we let you call that, that happens. That, that's what comes with it. Part of doing that too is recognizing that there are some uh, there are some necessities that needs to be in place to facilitate things like that. So, for example, it is awfully difficult to have a business here in Missing and be able to get paid online. Your mm. e-commerce aspect of things, and so we go into like the fintech. And what I think back of places like PaySwift right and how they were not afforded the opportunities to and what did they say to get wings unclipped mm -hmm. so that they can soar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so when we think about how we prepare ourselves to be an export driven and export led economy we have to think about so if a small business owner in St. Vincent and Grenadines wanted to set up how easy is it for that vendor in the U.S. to buy from me how am I going to get the result, the money out of the U.S. into St. Vincent and the Grenadines? And so we talk about upskilling people, talk about ways in which we can enable our citizens so that we can maximize on that. So it's not a matter of like just the physical um, crop that is planted in the soil that we need to think about when it comes on to the export driven mm -hmm. economy, but rather the integrated approach that is needed to, to create the environment so that that export driven vision can actually thrive and be possible. And I, I know a lot of people are still online cussing and arguing about um, pay swift. I used to use yeah, pay swift yeah. a whole lot. Yeah. A lot of people, in fact, I saw one of the guys here at the Union Island when we did a visit to the Southern Grenadines, and he was saying he's a teacher now. And they were doing so much good in fintech because, as a matter of fact, I would remind people that during the volcanic eruption, the NDP used PaySwift to raise funds to the tune of almost $20,000. 
to assist persons during the volcanic eruption. And so we think about fintech, where we were, that's how futuristic are we thinking in terms of um, the facilities that are in place to prepare people to maximize an, an export driven economy. And I think also about the fact that you have St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a very beautiful country. And I always say to my friends abroad, when you come to St. Vincent is one price for 32 because we have more than one island that you can explore. And you think, for example, somebody who may want to do a music video, they have so many different sceneries and options and so forth that they can choose from. So come to St. Vincent and film your video. Come to St. Vincent, that is bringing in foreign exchange as well. So we have to think of the different ways in which we can maximize bringing in revenue into our country. And I would say that that's a really, really good uh, marketing line for tourism to use. So if they use it, um, I guess we could say they hold it there. Well, it wouldn't be unusual for them to take ideas from you. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> no one's people benefit. <laughs> Major, I want to touch on something that's, that I think is, is very important as we're discussing exports. The crime in St. Vincent and the Grand Queens. How, how does that affect exports does it does it have an effect on exports and, and well who, who started the one today right? if, if you're teaching what i what i, I plan then it's, it's right there because so pretty last is a problem it is a problem and how how do we work to control it what, what can be put in place well you, you asked me that because i'm shadowing um i have to <laughs> so you're you're right 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 right. but but they, they also they hope you don't know this <laughs> so so the most, the most lives, lives in the past right? so we have to deal with that but let me let, let me see yourself myself crime is a problem and it, it affects immediately the investment climate in the big time People will think twice and something three times before they bring their money here. You know, there's an important statistic that is going around the place at the moment. And that St. Vincent being represented to be one of the, those countries in the world in which we are getting a declining population. You know, there's a net immigration from St. Vincent. More people are still to be leaving St. Vincent than are coming to St. Vincent. In fact, this is the over the last few years. About four thousand. Why do people leave? Greener pastures, in some cases, safety concerns, and why a lot don't come? Why there's no holidays or to return as permanent? Who people live about to come back home? They feel unsafe, just as they feel um, concerned about the, the health challenges. So, so system makes makes bad. So we have to have a plan to deal with the crime situation. Interestingly enough, the, the national budget on uh, crime for this year is $95 million. Police specific, it is 45. The prisons, I think, it's just over $7 million, $7 million. I highlight those facts to say that if we multiply that over the last 10, 15 years, we would see that we have spent about over a billion dollars on national security and probably close to a billion dollars Certainly over half a million dollars on police and the protective services. Now, what has happened with that last spending is that um, crime has gone in the other direction. The more money we spend, the more crime we get. So it obviously is not just a resource um, allocation issue. And sad to say, I believe that we've got to the point of this you now that, that it has become a part of our culture and our psyche. Bad boyism, um, temper tantrums, um, lawlessness. We get a lot of that in recent years. Intemperate um, is not good for us. It, 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 it negatively impacts the marketplace um, and across the board. And so we have to have a very serious strategy for the crime laws, be among us. But we have to have a serious strategy for for for, for use in crime in all beloved in this different means. And that is something that the Democratic Party will present in a more detailed form when we get close to the election because these guys are now so perfect. I was going to say, you know, you don't want to tell us now because well, we have been given we have been given it. But let's let's take one. Which the trend is on and, and um 
we have one reminder of, of it today. Over 15 years now, we've been speaking about the source of spiritual redemption chart, where we said protection, or we said the same as prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. So we look at what do we do in the social, spiritual, and redemption aspects of life. And they, they put both it. But they have been extracting it now. That's very peace. With apprenticeship programs, what they call it, what? On, 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 on site. They have started to come to the realization where they're saying that, uh, well, if you, you are properly educated, the chance that you're going to prison is less. Not that educated people don't end up there. But there's some truth to that. You have less people um, who have uh, up to their education and, and social mobility is going there. And so many other aspects of what we had in the social spirit and dental chat have been copied. There was a time when I said it cost us, we were spending $13,000 to keep a person in, in prison. That is what it was. And at that time, we were spending $5 to support a member becoming a girl guy, boy scout, Red Cross, Cadet, Pathfinders. That, that's not that. $13,000. Today, it is close to $16,000 to keep a person in prison. And the expenditure on a scout cadet guide oh. for value system is probably about $4. It's gone down. It's gone down. It's gone down. Because, and I, I know these stats because I look at them. Um, the last open the parliament, the Speaker of the House, great innovation, brought the guides to be in the house to sit because she wanted to guide her and got pretty up, pretty far up the chain. And she made the point that in St. Vincent the Grenadines, we have 3,000 guides. 3,000 guides. Beautiful. But the allocation of the government to the guides movement is $3,000. Dollar per minute. Dollar per Think of it. The, the, allocation, the allocation to the Girl Guide Movement of premium socialization extracurricular group in the city of the Girl Guides is a dollar per day. I remember you used to be in the part finance. Yeah, Fifteen thousand dollars to keep you in prison. Well, so, so we have to throw some things on the set. Yeah, you know, it is true that when you're, if you go back to the old adage that devil buying work for idle hands. It's, it ties into all of that to be true and if we can invest more in our social programs then obviously people will be more enabled more engaged and feel there's a sense of hope for them to be able to have opportunities in life but one of the things that major said um at the start of it was who feels it know it knows it and as a CMOS farmer i often suffer from a lot of tips like people just be going and taking up CMOS and so forth. So one of the things no, that CMOS. Exactly <laughs> but <laughs> God. It's God Ocean. God CMOS. I can hear it. And it's God CMOS. And it. you put this scene in, you know, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. But I'll tell you it. seriously though, one of the things that I have to resort to doing is I, 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 and before I say what I did. One of the reasons why people do what they do is because they don't believe that there will be any accountability, any penance. There's no repercussions for what, they're, what, what they've done. They're not going to be caught. And then if you're not going to be caught, then might as well you go ahead and do it anyway. So one of the things that I ended up doing is invested in a solar camera. So that no, yes, it's <laughs> yeah, it's open white. So I then go and I get a camera and I put it right there where you could see, you know, the space of my CMOS farm. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, a prime grant can help me to buy 10 more cameras, right? <laughs> um, do you as a map on game? No, well, you see, I said that to say that there must be practical ways in which when you're issuing government financing, that you there must be some targeted way in which it is being distributed so that it ties back into the overall productivity of of making the country work you know and so i think about a lot of the farmers who have um farms who live far away from it and so they can't monitor it you simply say listen we're going to have a program in 2024 where we buy 50,000 cam cameras 
hopefully they don't treat them like the way in which they have the tanks down at Otney Hall and they actually distribute them. But you buy a couple of these, you put them on the farms, so or maybe, just maybe, that may cause less people to leave the farming, um, to, 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 to remain in the farming sector, because as Bruce said, lots of people are leaving. And how can we incentivize them into staying? These are simple and practical measures that I believe can be implemented to help people. You have to speak, think of specific and targeted interventions uh, that, that cause people to want to stay. But I, I want, because I know we're running out of time, and Daniel, uh, let me just go before my colleague. Um, and I want to leave this for Vincent to reflect on a little bit tonight. Because you're talking about export led. And we're given the reasons why it must be export led. And I started my conversation and I said that we are 100,000 Vincent. I just rounded the figure off. I didn't go through the four or the seven. And this, this, this will have it. But if you look at any of the important institutions of state, Vinlet is consumer base, just about 42,000 customers. Water Authority is the same 44 and 42,000. And, and for obvious reasons, they should have similar consumer base. National insurance scheme is 40 plus thousand as well. Hmm? Those are three important parameters of economic activity. You know what happens from time to time in Vinland. People don't want the green van coming through the air because they can't. They delight it. As a politician, one of the things is that when you hear from people with, with them, I will for three, four, five, six months of um, water. In other words, they still can't take care of themselves. But that's the numbers, 40 something thousand. How many people turn out to vote in Simmons and the Grand NDP 32,000, 33,000, ULP 32,000, 60 something thousand people go to the polls. What happens to the other 20,000 people? They're economic non participants. And then let's question again. If major is correct, I need this easy to test that the only 42,000 people who are connected to the system water, electricity, and ice. How many people live in a household in Sydney? Two or three? Two or more than that? I think you tell me it's more than three or four people per household in Sydney. So something doesn't tally, does it? Let's take a small figure for each household, at least three people in the house, a man. A man and his woman, or a woman and his or her man, a husband and wife. Let me sound decent tonight. And people, people a woman think, and her two kids. A woman and her two kids. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just think of the provocation and create in there. Right. How, how does that all tell you back when there were 100,000 kids? You know? Yes. You know? <laughs> but that's what we have to address. That's what we, we have to address. There. That's all, yeah, I, I wanted to come in sure. on the question that you raised, a very, very important question as to how does high incidence of crime affect the export-led approach that we're talking to? I spoke to Perinia last week earlier. And I'm going to say this because some people don't want you to say it as it is. This government is contributing, the current government of services in Grand is contributing to a lot of the problems that we are facing. I've said this before, and I'll speak to it again. There are too many people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who are flashing around this country a farmer's ID who don't have a blade of grass in the ground, nor a hoof on the, on the horse that they take care of. None. But guess what? They are facilitated to be given a farmer's aid so that when the state is paying out monies to farmers, bona fide farmers, these party hacks then turn up with their ID cards, their farmer's ID that is, and they collect monies in their pocket improperly. So the question is so, why are you blaming the government, of Israel? This is why. The same people who don't legitimately involve themselves in farming, find themselves either facilitating or engaging in stealing people's crops and animals. You show up to the buyer, the buyer says, um, well, so where you get this four, five, six buckets of meat from? And you flash that idea. 
I'm a father. The same idea that you got as an illegitimate farmer, as a non farm, you turn around to clash that, to sell the meat products and the, the, the crops that legitimate farmers have produced. What you have done by so doing, you, you disincentivize the legitimate farmers to continue to produce. And therefore, when it comes to having that crop, having those meat products to export, we don't have it. And so we, in and of ourselves, put the, the, the metaphorical knife to the throat of an export-led economy by the poor philosophies and management structures of the current administration. I will, I will go into greater details in, in these matters Saturday night when I speak to the people of Chatham. That's a good plan. <laughs> it's a really good plan. In fact, <laughs> we should have put him a minute to talk. What's happening on Saturday night? Go ahead and tell us. Well, well the truth is that um, I, am, I am continuing to engage in, in conversations with the people across the constituency of South Central Winwood. As I, on the other hand, engage with farmers and fisher folks in this country to advance their causes. And so this Saturday, the people of Chapman's, it will be their opportunity to hear the message of hope from the New Democratic Party. President Friday, Vice President Lakeup, myself, Senator John, Brother Chieftain Neptune, Vice President um, uh, uh, Stevenson. We will all descend on that platform. Um, the others will be there. There'll be uh, main speakers, there'll be support based speakers, um, young Democrats, women are from the constituency, and we will do, we'll package that in two, two and a half hours and make sure we deliver powerful messages to the people of Chapman's so home. I was delighted. It, it would be by the, the Darren Pope shop, right there, Chapman's next close to where the old cemetery is. Um, we started at about 7 o'clock, 7, 7.30, and in two hours, 9, 9.30, we should be out of there. You sure? Come on, you two and a half. Two and a half. We have to build his constituency for that three. Two and a half. Um, <laughs> yeah, but but the, the point is, though, is that I have said in, in my walkabouts in Chapman's over the last few days, I've said to the farmers, I will address you in, in more frontal ways on Saturday night as to how the new Democratic Party proposes to rescue some of these problems. The perennial last the, the ID card, the lacking of farm roads, because all of this is affecting one of the pillars, one of the fundamental four pillars of economic, economic growth and development as positioned and propositioned by the new Democratic Party. And the concept of an export-led economy will not be satisfied until we wrestle with these issues that we understand so very well. So as, I mean, when, when I said a few years ago, Major, in the budget speech, that when the, the fleet of tuna vessels had pulled out of St. Vincent and there was somewhere in Africa to register, I said, put a fund in place now. Send out these people to study. Whilst they're at school studying, you put some money in an almost like a, a, a separate fund, so by the time four or five years they finish their studies, be ready to buy four, five, six, seven, eight vessels to help them to go and do what they have to do. To be out there two weeks, three weeks out of the waters, and when they come back, they are coming back with things processed, ready to go as part of the export led economy. I was not to scan. Today, I'm hearing solidarity fleet expansion. Same idea that they laughed at, they jump in at it now like hot bread. But more ideas are coming. The, the, the interesting thing about the fleet expansion is that um, you would have thought that our Grenadine shipbuilding would have got the job to build those boats. Yeah. But for reasons that we can't explain, the boats have to be built in Cuba. Yeah. Well, the, brought back the, the fact is, there's no fleet expansion. When Parliament sits on the 15th of, of February, I've asked a pointed question to the Minister of Agriculture and Tennis Ministry about that program, how many persons have purchased into it. How, how much monies have been out on it, yes. and so on and so on. Because I am going to unmask the Parliament. Given that, <laughs> given that Parliament is, is, is allowed to be kept. Uh, well, that may be But the point is, I want the Fisher folks in this country to, to know that whilst on, on so many occasions I speak to the issue of, of agriculture, fisheries is, is uppermost in my mind because the blue economy has the greatest potential. I think your sister Lavon will speak to the Grenada experience. We are way, 
behind on the line in terms of how do we advance the fishery subsector as part of the blue economy that has great potential for seven million US dollars. And we have way more seascape than they do. Oh, yeah. I went fishing one time and you went fishing. More than one. Time. <laughs> yes. Come on, speak the truth. <laughs> one time when I went fishing. One time when I went fishing. <laughs> That's more like it. I met someone from Pity Martinique uh, and another time someone from Caribou. Fishing just, you know, on the outskirts of our waters and so forth. And of course, they had a bigger fishing boat than I did. But the truth is, a lot of times people don't have the resources to be able to go there and be out there. That is why we always talk about having a development bank. That is why we always talk mm -hmm. about upskilling our people. Right. You just heard Brother Bruce um, basically talking about that and sending our people to get them equipped. Because the truth is, unless we invest in our people, and unless, as, um, to expound on one of your points, unless we have a vision to implement that is beyond just how can I do two footpaths here? during the six months leading up to election mm -hmm. to re-secure a vote, then we're only going to continue to think that a physical building is equivalent to development. Mm -hmm. And so that is why you see every now and again, you have a host at a halfway infrastructure projects across St. Vincent and the Grenadines that ultimately does not impact or improve the lives of Vincentia. You think of the Peters Hope project, you, well, there's no hope there. You think of the oh, um, yeah. oh, we fisheries, that's just, you think of a lot of these. And there's um, no, there no fishing happening there. Exactly. You think about I, I should have just marked the masters at last on the wall. Oh, and you yeah. think of a lot yeah. of the community centers yeah. as well that were built and just not what, what utilized. The budget. Yeah. There's one in Canada, uh, uh, for uh, example, uh, uh, that is in the back of the island. First of all, it was a bad idea to put it there because it is far from where most of us are living, right? And it's it was built right next to um this the sea, so it's suffering from the sea blast. The thing was never used a day. And so all well, of it yeah. comes back, yeah. All of it comes oh, yeah. back to the point that. When we think about the vision for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, it has to be bigger than doing something in the six months so that this look good. So like, for example, a prime grant that comes into effect just about three, four months before an election cycle and then it's dropped. How does that tie into the broader, bigger image of where will St. Vincent and the Grenadines be in 2030, in 2035? So Sustainable development of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And so when we talk in the New Democratic Party about this economic-led and driven economy, it is clearly a vision for beyond the now because it will outlive the political life cycle of Major League Gulf of Israel mm -hmm. Bruce and myself when the time comes. It should be a long time from now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you have to think about development more than just, boy, let me re-secure this seat one time to see how much I could get more kickbacks into my pocket. You have to think about it from a developmental and sustainable way so that St. Vincent and the Grenadines and so that what you're feeling up there, the man down there also is getting a bit of that to... to, um, to, to and that's national security too, you know. If people feel that they, that they have job security, it speaks to their mindset, mm -hmm. you know, especially with our men folk, who in many cases are lacking in confidence. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to provide them with the, the means. You know, sometimes I like, talk about me, me and my mom. You know, I, I look at situations at times of the guys who will walk the ladies to the, the, to the van right. to, to get in there, to either go to school or to go and do whatever work they've, they've, they've picked up, you know. And then they go back home. And maybe some of them smoke out, some of them do other things. And four or five o'clock in the evening, they come back when the band, band comes in to receive them. That's the lifetime of, of a lot of young men. Yeah, you know, one of the things that Major always talks about, which um, I think we haven't quite expanded expand on just yet, and I know that we're running out of yeah, time. I do want to get into is the, more yeah, the, 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 the whole concept of an agro-processing plant. Should I allow you to go no, ahead no, with no, my no, job? I, I, no, I am. You do a very beautiful job, so go ahead. No, but, but, but basically, you know, because it's, it's, 
it goes back again to the um, the, the the will to do these things. We are speaking now in the NDP of putting down a fifty thousand fifty million dollars agro processing plan. And that's because you have to go big to think big. There are a lot of things you have to do. To have properly structured and staffed with the technical people, your marketing departments, the finance departments, the, you know, your HR, you know. So you don't know wishy washy kind of business. Purchasing the people who are buying foods, picking food, sorting foods, and all this sort of thing. There's so much potential in some instant negotiations beyond where we are now. And I play the fool with um, Grenada. Again, go back to it. I've put acres and acres of land into Sosa. Why? Because Sosa are passed from being um, a delicious, safe, um, delicious food. Yeah. Also, the health food. And people tell you it does a lot of good for you um, against uh, cancer fighting and so on and so forth. As you mentioned earlier tonight, turmeric and ginger, it falls in the same line. So we have a range of products and synthesis. Some can go for flavors purpose. Some can go to the health market purpose, and we have to learn to what we're going to juice, what we're going to dice, what we're going to freeze, what what are we going to do with them? What are we going to dry? There's so much we can do, and that's why we have to have a proper location. We're going to have to fight for this in the Democratic Party because <laughs> I'm not going to mention my bias today, so that people start to think why why hire no in the place and then they need to come out. It has to be more more mm-hmm. and so forth. No, it must be Belmont and so on and so forth. I understand that debate. I've been thinking about that too. I want us to get to the point where we are seriously understanding that we could do this thing completely different to what is the case. Who's we'll talking about the production? Lavondin. This doesn't have to be a responsibility solely of, as I said, of the um, Ministry of Agriculture. You know? In fact, I figure take away as much of it as you can from them. Because the track record doesn't speak to them. They spent over a billion dollars in Ministry of Agriculture to produce very little over the last 10 years. Because we talk about the Ministry of Agriculture going forward. Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> going forward. But no, but what, what I mean, for example, Vinlek. Let me go back to this because I said we have to be creative and innovative. We can't sit down the whole public and civil service structures, eight to four workers. When the boss wants to be able to pay the, the light bill, I said there are 42,000 of them. What if they decide that we, we are going to support some 10% of our, 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 our customers with a tree planting program? So anybody who is interested in, in um, growing sauce up, and they, they, they can select the commodity that they want to. We will provide you with the, the plant, plants to do sauce up, and we will have an internal department in Vinland that lends all of the services for agricultural work for, for that purpose. And that's I want people to pay my the, the NIS bill to, to contributions. Or well, what does NIS do to make sure that people can make contributions? The NIS can do the same thing. We're going to spend X million dollars to provide passion fruit and service and abilities to treat 4,000 people. Or low hanging golden apples. You, you pick your product. And we could finance it. What authority could do the same thing and put the article inside of there? So that they themselves can have contributors, supporters, sponsors, customers who they help finance and provide an opportunity. I'm confident we could provide jobs to 10,000 people with a bold, imaginative approach to agro processing. And that's absolutely necessary. 500 drop a new job in the doesn't cut it, it doesn't save the NX. 500 new jobs will not save, it may reduce. The thought of crime in here and there. We, quality of the jobs. we need large numbers of people. You know, I'm surprised they have people who have worked for 10 years in the Grand Bay, 15 years, 20 years. You're surprised? Yeah. Well, not as surprised about the number of people who are like that, who have never been able to hold on a job in the Grand Bay. And I've just given up. They are the same set of people who are easily being recruited. All kinds of nefarious activity and have to take risks and take chances. Or oh, women are so vulnerable in some Well, I, I'm I'm happy that you 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 brought this up because I I also want us to touch on young people, right? And and the possibility of them even opening their own businesses. 
what what do you think or what ideas or what is the vision of the NDP to assist young people in becoming business owners so we could you know drop with the line like lava and drop tonight and say well i'm a business owner <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. dinner and drinks you know so you mean same line that you drop that shape people that watch yeah but you, you asking you asking a really important question my good friend and i, I, I want again whenever I'm, I'm 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 engaging this conversation tonight i always want to to pivot you heard me just said earlier that look we could when it gets closer to the elections some 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 structure to the ideas will, will, will come i want people to remember this during the period 2016 2017 there about i consistently advocated the need for a development bank because a development bank in its concept and philosophy speaks to how do we position our young people, Danny, to move their business ideas from concepts to reality. One of the things I did is that I went to the nation's parliament to ask the Minister of Finance whether or not the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines will give consideration to finance the establishment of a development bank for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I was told point blank in the answer, no. I remember. At the back of my mind is what had happened probably 30, 40 years ago when Bangladesh, using the Grameen banking concept, was able to engage in an overall transformation of the Bangladesh economy by embarking on this, what they call Grameen banking concept, the developmental banking concept similar, where you provide financial resources to young people. First of all, you, you make sure that they're, they're trained in project proposal writing, project development, project delivery, and then you provide the enabling environment, which is the financing for them to do it. You shepherd them through the process, and you don't, you, you're not bothering with them about repaying those monies until three, four, five years on the road. When the projects that they have started kick in, they, 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 they on level five now, and you say, right, five years down the road, start making back some payments for the monies that was lent to you, so it could be unlent to other people. These guys heard this conversation happening and didn't quite understand it. You know what they did? Prime, prime millions of dollars they just took and, and fled across St. Vincent. A lot of it to them to support of their party. I mean, I don't want to say that loosely because I, I want young people to be able to get this type of support. The point is this. We in the New Democratic Party recognize that by, by Put it in place by um what is it, what is the financial world we look for capitalizing that is the word i'm looking for in the business world by capitalizing a development bank and have it properly managed and we have the people in the party you know we have the people in the new democratic party with years of banking experience and years of developmental banking experience so we're not coming to the party unprepared we're not buying this car and learning to drive after buying the car we are coming to the party knowing how to drive. So we are going to be in a position where we will put that money to benefit the majority of young people in this country. We'll give them an opportunity to become young entrepreneurs. That is where we are going. I think, Bruce, that it's important to put in here as well the plan of the Innovation Hub. You know that the New Democratic Party has set up in fact, there are two points that I'd like to, to jump on, but I'll talk about the, the innovation hub first. And I mentioned it previously at our, our rally um, that Camden we had Park. in Camden Park. And boy, it almost feels a lot bigger now. Time's off. I think she has something up to sleep. I think she has something up to sleep. I remember mentioning the innovation hub, and I've had a few questions about it since. The whole concept of having the innovation hub is where you have a place where people can come with their business ideas. You say, listen, I have this idea of a piece of that. I want to start to do
do something, but I want to go into a value added product. I need the financing for it. At this innovation hub, you will have the people that are coming from the development bank. You will have a government um, development representative there. So you don't have to go by the minister and knock his door and ask him because at this hub, there's already a representative there who will have to take this back to the ministry. And I know that Dr. Friday spoke about developing a ministry of um, private I'm sector. Sick and business development. So instead of you having to go and try and track down the minister, you will have one of the representatives there within this innovation hub facility. You will have a marketing officer there. You will have uh, somebody to help you with your um, proposal with your project development. proposal development. Because mm -hmm. one of the things people, there are some people, for example, who are very good at doing, implementing, but they cannot necessarily sit down and do the, the paperwork people. of it. And so the innovation hub will help with those things. You know, it will help you with, all right, this is a marketing plan. You need something to take to the developmental bank. Here's your um, uh, your structural plan, your roadmap of development. This is, support structure this is the support. To exactly. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about the innovation hub, this this is one of the ways in which the NDP is saying we will help young people, not just young. <laughs> There are lots of people in St. Vincent and the Grandines who are sitting on million dollar ideas, but they do not necessarily have the roadmap in how to get there. Million dollar idea like the, the spa water business in Benin. Correct. The spa infused water that spa infused um, water to, to Senator um, Kimakas Matisse um, has shown us that there is capacity. Correct. Laman, I brought home three bottles of alcohol recently. <laughs> <laughs> And, and it was inspired by Sinclair without him doing it. One was lime infused vodka. The other was turmeric and ginger infused vodka. And the other one was breadfruit. Turmeric and ginger. Yeah. And the other one is breadfruit infused vodka. Now, think about it. Then he looks like she wants Remember? I want to try this <laughs> up. Well, Daddy, I, if, if, if you have a boy who is taking the turmeric and ginger thing, you have to. It's healthy. No, no, that's the way you have to make sure every time he takes one, he takes two. All right. I've, I've given you the bread food, I've given you the lime, I've given you the food. Okay. But I, I, I want to say this. We have the Eastern Caribbean group of companies. I mean, Simmons and Brewery. Yeah. We have bread food. We have ginger. We have lime. We have turmeric. Eh? Right. Make it up. We're talking about export led. So we have a base for, for producing alcohol in, in, in that sense. And we have the basic agricultural produce that could be infused that gives it the siblings and bread. So we have it sounds to me tonight that we really it's two to one, two for the siblings and brand rather than one for the Well, <laughs> I, I would not become overly bothered about whether they shut away or said this. No, I, I just, I just can't see it. <laughs> no, but, but the, the point really is, I mean, and if you if you if you want to fall back to, to what he has been able to do in Belair, to infuse this power water, nobody has done that as far as I'm aware, where power water is concerned. So that is something that is, would be unique to St. Vincent Telegrandi and something that we can sell out there, export. You know, at the last expo they had in Andersville, the people who pushed that power don't want anybody to go to the And I, I, I want to just um, interject here because I know that there are lots of people who feel as though, you know, we, we did not turn a, a tragedy into enough of a blessing with Welcome the in. volcanic eruption. See, one of the things that a lot of people are unable to, a lot of times people focus too much on the raw material of things and not necessarily on the valid added product of it. And I also think, for example, where Barbados incentivized it. So Barbados government had offered, listen, we're going to give this amount of money if you have an idea to do with all of this actually right. came to us from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Unfortunately, you're right. We didn't maximize on that. But a lot of it too has to do with the fact that we have to think about how can we create more value added products with our resources, which goes back into the agro-processing plant and so forth. And I too do think that we have a missed opportunity there 
in terms of things that we could have. Well, actually, I'll tell you something and a little secret. I have a little bag of ash saved <laughs> at my house, and at some point, I'm going to let people know that this yeah, this, this, <laughs> this sea moss volcanic ash soap, <laughs> you know, you have to try different things you're right and i, I want to say i want to say though that um luckily for for south central Winwood, there is it a very there's a, there's a very energetic very thought-provoking young woman in the constituency she works in i think the, the department of adult education and i want to call the name her name is nevlin antoine good night, nevlin. Good night to you nevlin and Nevlin has been able over the years. She's, I think, she is currently the, an executive member of CAFRA, the Regional um, um, Feminist Research Organization. And I watched them following the volcanic eruptions. Took a speed to soap making. I, I um, supported the project, and I went to the graduation ceremony, and I was able to receive turmeric soap. Bathing volcanic ash. So, so I, I am saying that now to say you raised a most important question, but we have the capacity. But where is the enabling environment to allow these young people to take the next step, to go to the next level, to take us to the export position to say, look, all you people who are so amused about what happened in St. Vincent and the volcanic eruption. Here is a bar of soap that you can take to your bathroom and shower with and remember that you've helped with the recovery and the resilience. We, we, we throw phrases like recovery and resilience around the place without having real tangible meaning attached to them. Well, let's, let's, let's Israel, um, summarize that because we, we sound like we are we afraid to call, call it for what is excuse. We have to have a government that is private sector friendly, that genuinely believes that the private sector will be the engine of the economy. Mm -hmm. That's the new Democratic Party. That's, new. that's, that's mm -hmm. us. Dr. Fred is saying we'll have a ministry of the private sector. We'll have that with supporting institutional infrastructure. We'll have a development bank. You have highlighted that here mm -hmm. tonight. We'll have a ministry separate right. for the blue economy. Yeah, and a separate ministry. We'll have the proper portfolios established. We recognize that it is firms, it is businesses that trade and not government. So we will have lots of support to having more firms, more business, more entrepreneurship coming on the stream. And it will not be the business of an NDP government to crowd out or private sector. It will be all business to facilitate them, to facilitate them and hands up the private sector. And give them the fuel, the oxygen that is necessary to fly, to go abroad, and to make money and lots of it. So you're beginning to see the steps that we are going to take in the Democratic Party. We will be business friendly. We would not see the private sector as an unnecessary evil. You know, there's something that has to be changed in civil for developments. Because we can talk about development bank, we can talk about commercial banking, we can talk about financing generally, generally. This government did something terrible that affects a lot of businesses from being able to progress. And they did that when they blindsided and bad treated bigger bigs, when they closed down the business. They did that when they took away Marcus the Freitas' um, business opportunity. And, I, and what would happen, and I've said this even in the presence of the governor of the Central Bank when we had the opportunity to meet him. And when the Central Bank team agreed that the development bank was financing, you know what was that issue? You can go to a bank with the best project in the world, dot the I cross the T's. You see, this is great. Before you leave the bank with the office, you may, you may turn around and ask, which part did you support? And I suppose I ask you this, eh? Because he knows however good your project is, especially if it's dependent on governmental support or significant public sector support in a particular way, and you're not on the right side of the politics, your business will be dead in the world. You have to get rid of that. You have to get rid of that. You won't be able to stand on those feet and just be able to get the things going. Yeah, somebody, told me, um, somebody told me 
just in this week, actually, earlier in this week, that oftentimes as a private sector, um, as a business owner, that they feel as though they're competing with the government or that the government does not want you to get rich enough you don't want to get because it. Yeah, if you become too independent of them, then, you know, they have to... And, People should be made to feel that way. And I think that it's important here to also put a plug for one of the points in our manifesto about our, our pay guarantee. Um, in our manifesto, one of the plans is that one of the problems that's plaguing our private sector at this time is the fact that sometimes you provide a particular good or service to the government and it takes you years, months before you can get your payment. Hmm. Right. And in the meanwhile, you pay number. And you're still exactly. And so the New Democratic Party has said that we will have a, a I think it's three month, three to four month pay guarantee. So once it Not is that you, from correct. Once it is that you've provided your documentation, your invoice, and there's nothing to it that is, you know, and what I need for the investigation, you're guaranteed to get your pay within a certain time frame. What that does for you is that it causes you to be able to continue to pay your staff. You continue to be able to buy your raw material. You continue to be able to conduct business because if all of it, a lot of, uh, it's a little bit of free business advice. Business survives. <laughs> business survives on cash flow. Well, Major could speak more about it because he's he has, well, I know, you know, we are winding down. I, I'll join you. Yeah, you this Yesterday, in Saint Kitts Nevis. The largest yeah. cruise ship in the world bought it in St. Kitts Nevis. A country that's probably half the size of small St. Kitts Nevis, the largest cruise ship. That's what we you know, is benefiting from the NDP investment in the ferry boat, the cruise ship terminal. But the point they want to make in that regard, it is these St. Kitts that has over the last 35 years injected billions of dollars into the, that economy, which is keeping it afloat with infrastructure and the multiplier effect of money circulating. If government is going to be this great enabling semester, we have to find a way of moving the needle of revenue without sending our hands deeper and deeper into the pockets of incentives to pay the way out of it. Yeah. So there's a lot of rethink that has to take place. And that's why I'm not ashamed to say it at all. I'm a strong supporter of an investment program, a sovereign funds program, such as the CBI is an investment. Grenada, we have about $850 million in income stream now. Grenada is 1.3. St. Lucia is 1.4. Little Dominica is, has a Greater in revenue stream than similar to the revenues. What, dog biting? Watch you, but not what dog biting. Let's be real. I, I know that we have to uh, wrap up and wind up. I just want to ask uh, one final question before I give you guys the opportunity to just add anything you, you want. Um, In terms of well, we have a business owner here, so I, I will direct it to you first. But I believe you know that to go in a love form is actually a business venture. Everybody here. I want you to start um, with this one, right? How difficult is it? No, 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 don't be afraid to get real with it with us tonight. Is it for a, a business owner to thrive in St. Vincent as it stands? You know, one of the things that I find difficult with being a business owner in St. Vincent and the is that um, there's no there's no blueprint. So when you're just starting up, or if you don't come from a family where you have that this day where, where they're entrepreneurial people so your ordinary folk person like me is coming from a um a poor family you're the one who's trying to get it done you basically have no guidance on how to do things i think that one of the things that's missing is the fact that there's no 
you don't know there's no one stop place to go for guidance and mentorship because the truth is if you throw a little bit of money to people in the instance of for example prime anybody could just spend that and it's done and that's why i believe in the initiative of like the 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 in a the innovation hub lots of people spend it and stuff. in addition to that there are lots of things that as you go along you're like oh i didn't know i need this oh, i didn't know i need that part of it is an entrepreneurial journey it helps to build you as well but one of the things that hurts me in particular and i know um certainly other people i look i'm a big fan of fbis i have nothing against foreign direct investments and so forth but i firmly believe that if a foreign direct investor is coming and they're opening a big company here that's going to provide 200 jobs or 100 jobs and they're able to get three four hundred jobs maybe they're able to get 10 years of um, duty-free concessions as a foreigner myself as a local person who's trying to do a business as well who can provide employment for five people I may not be entitled as a matter of ratio to 10 years of um, duty-free concessions, but why can't I get two years? Why can't I get one year? Something. Something so that in my initial state of bringing in the, up, the, the, the equipment and so forth necessary to get the business going, that is given the opportunity to thrive because I don't, you know, I, I think that something might not incentivize it so that more people, because the truth is, you know, one of the reasons why you hear we're talking about export-led economies is because the NDP knows that the government cannot provide all the employment that is necessary for our country. And to do that, an export-led economy means that we believe in enabling the, the private sector. And how do you do that? Imagine you have somebody who, who went to study. You have a student loan. You come back. You have to start to pay it immediately. And you're trying to start up a business. You have to be paying the student loan, bringing in these equipment to start this new business, paying three staff to get the business going. And then you still go and they increase the cost of import tax and you have to pay that too. So the environment that exists in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to, to start up a business from scratch it's not business friendly. And then when it is easier to get loans from commercial banks for cars than it is to get for business is where we feel the crunch of the absence of development bank. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about all of these things in such a way, we understand why the New Democratic Party is more in tune with the times and what people need at this particular time. You take, for example, I have a lot of creatives who work with the NDP for um, when we have rallies. Um, some of them, they want to bring in a new camera, a new drone. I believe that people in the creative sector should have specific duty-free concessions that enable them. If you're bringing in two new cameras, good for you. I believe in your I'm, dream. I'm a camera guy, as it is. He's in his spirit now, I know he is. <laughs> I have a particular passion for the creatives, and I really believe that, and the part of that, as I said, talent is something that we can export to. And so how do we enable that? I know you know, you know how much money you pay for the importation on cameras and stuff and equipment, these sort of things. Somebody who's just starting up, I think that they deserve an automatic. Once it is that you can bring and show that this is going to be for business, I'm going to provide employment for two persons, myself and two others, that's three. That's 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 less people who are, you know, unemployed and dependent. and dependent. And so I believe definitely in in the the vision of Dr. Friday of having a, uh, um, the innovation hub one, the commercial bank, and also the ministry the of the private. Pardon? You mean the development bank? Yes. Okay. Isn't that what I said? Is that commercial. Commercial. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably been here too long. <laughs> but I'm trying to And the ministry of the private sector. No. Who told the point, sir? I really feel very happy that I've been a part this conversation with my colleagues here tonight. I remember when Arnim Lucas was in the parliament, he was excited about the fact that a particular legislation came to the, the parliament and it was called the Loan Guarantee Scheme. And basically there is a, there is a program for the commercial banks supported by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank that guarantees risk takers to go to the bank to get loans without having to find um, 
collateral to get those loans. It's not heavily pushed and not heavily promoted. It's supposed to be But I also want to cross over now, pivot as, as uh, my, my, my brother would say, to this cultural sports possibilities. Over McCoy, I believe, is in Pakistan now. And you'll make some money. As so many Caribbean cricketers are becoming millionaires around the world, market in this case. I remember about 15 years ago, or thereabout, when I was president of football, and I developed a brand, Vinci Heat. People don't know that. Yeah, she looks, I, she looks very impressed. I was president <laughs> and I developed the brand Vinci Heat, meaning that we'll put on the field of play the 11 best Vincent shirts. I didn't care where they came from in the rest of the world, but that's what represents it. We got to 73 in the world. 73 is the position that Russia had when they hosted the World Cup for four. Hmm? There are 54 there about countries in the US. Just think of the possibilities of how many, if we spend money in support and collaboration with international bodies and something like football, how many of our young men have the possibilities to make it big? As has happened all across Africa, where so many of them are coming back home and opening up foundation mm -hmm. and business and charities and all sorts of things. You know what it means? We have to begin to get to that stage where we don't limit ourselves, limit our people to the 150 square miles of city. The world is the oyster. They must have a world view of life, a world view of things. Not be whole not to Friday and leak up and comments and um, names that I prefer not to promote and, and I spoke on like to say today. But let, let, let them have the opportunities. Let them have the opportunity. And I'm curious about them. Because it could happen in sports, it could happen in the culture, it could happen in the arts. And we could do a lot more than we're doing. You think Blondie Board and those guys are not real talents? They used to go to that thing to make uniforms. You know? You think Nelson Dog doesn't have real talent? That we can sell a lot of what we're doing here to carnivals around the world and so forth? Well, there's a lot more we can do than we're doing. But we have to broaden up by the whole right of this exported and exported opportunity for Vincentius across the world. I am there to make this contribution. I'll, I'll, I'll chime in by saying, I mean, I've had some experiences that are quite similar to my, uh, my good friend Lavon. Um, and if she thinks she's from a poor family, then I am from a dot poor family. <laughs> um, I want to be the judge. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll contextualize. I, I'm never ashamed to sit. I always say to people, I grew up in a little village called Lardas in a single bedroom wooden structure. My mother and my father and about six, seven of us. Yes, single bedroom, living room, all the gym, outside kitchen, and mother, father, and seven children. And a latrine. Latrine outside. You. So <laughs> I set the context right. So when I returned from university in England, um, I had to find a way because at that stage you're getting into the game late. I'm entering in the in the last third on the football field. I didn't have the time to dribble all the way up to school. I had to find myself in front of the goal to school early. And so you, you had to get I had to get my business up and running, and it was it was very challenging. I didn't have a, a family of leacocks. It's all my love practice. It's all my love practice. My love practice, yes. You know, I didn't have that foundation. I didn't have uh, that. Of the leacocks. Yeah. With, 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 with business experience of years of going around town and selling stuff. So you know what it means, how, how to convince people to buy and so on and so on. Those persuasive skills and support. You know, but I had to, I had to be able to bring myself to that point. Like Lavon said, um, and learn on the job in terms of ushering a, a, a business from its embryonic stage to bring it to a place where we provide an employment for three, four people. And again, Lavon is absolutely right. The support structures um, to, to help you to get cracking um, is not there. But you go into a stage where you now export that service 
So for you, you could move from um, a practice in St. Vincent to exporting your service to having a practice overseas. And, and I'm saying um, we we have a lot of that that we could benefit from. Just um, a few months ago in South Central, we honored a young man by the name of Samwick Bruce. And Samwick is into music production and has worked with artists here in St. Vincent and overseas. Uh, and Lavon was talking about the, the fintech issue and, and the capacity of, Sam, of people like Sam to be able to still write in St. Vincent and do the work, prepare, create the music, create the, the, the engineering material, and just transship it through the computer, get paid. And right here, it means that we, I don't have to, to bother to find a job for Sam Bruce in South Central. Create the environment for him, he will employ himself and provide employment possibilities for two more young people right in South Central and make life easier for all of us. That is where the New Democratic Party has positioned itself, that we are prepared to work with young people, vulnerable women, young men on the block. That's where we're going to be focusing. Creating jobs, meaningful jobs, sustainable jobs that will help the poor, the underprivileged, and the downtrodden to lift themselves up and move to the next level. Well, I, I would be proud to um, the Honourable Senator um, on a Saturday night in Chapman's post <laughs> cemetery, um, where I uh, dedicate to him <laughs> where he can keep this thing lost, but one bed with most. Um, you wouldn't want to exchange that for oh, well, more than that the yard of street. <laughs> <laughs> where, where there's one communal bucket for the whole ten, but, <laughs> but you know, for when she came, it's going to be the stop tonight. And this is an important lesson, you know, that when it comes down to it, we in the New Democratic Party are not a set of guys and girls who feel we have an entitlement. We come from the sort of the earth, from working families, and we have made good of ourselves to the little opportunity that we have had. And we're here now and now saying, give us the chance to share our rich history, to change the lives. Of others who are so deserving. That's why we also have this belief in a second chance society. People need not one, not twice, not three times. But let us change and transform this thing in a real practical sense. For all of us, we don't see color. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. And Daniel, before you wrap up, if I can quickly say, I know that you said it will be bi-weekly, but um, for those of you who are still viewing right now, you get to know first. So yes, we'll be doing this um, bi-weekly, but it doesn't mean you won't have a weekly program. Mm -hmm. Starting next week, we will also start the NDP on the go uh, program as well, which would um, be... And normally, you know that we do these programs on Thursday nights. We're having it tonight, but normally you can look out for it on a Thursday night at the same time, 8 to 10. Um, so this week you'll have the round table. The next week you'll have us in the community okay. and then we'll come back again at the round Thank table. You. Exactly. So we'll be alternating. Not that you won't have a program every week, but um, look out for NDP in the community starting next week. Okay, and I just want to give some shout outs to you, our viewers, because you know we have to do this. So uh, I just want to say good night to Winston. Bigger big, big he's, he's watching. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to say good night to Florence. Good night to just a few more. I saw how my bio saying that you should be doing voiceovers for this. I said exactly. good night to Harvey as well. And we want to say thank you so much for being a part of our talk tonight. And we hope to have you join us again so you can look out for and be on the go next and week, on the Thursday. Next Thursday. So have a great night. We hope to have you back with us on our next chat. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.